And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Sometimes less is more. Uh, there's a lot of box covers out there with warriors fighting dragons and spaceships swooping across. And they, I love covers like that. They give me a feeling of adventure. But this is one classy cover. I don't, I don't know what it is. I just, I just like this. This startup fever. Um, maybe, or maybe the beginning to the movie Footloose. But either way, it's a neat concept and, and the idea of having different startup companies and trying to get users to adapt to your things that you do, whether it be a Facebook clone or whether it be a new uh, handheld mobile app or whatever it is, you're trying to get people to buy into yours. It's a great idea. The board looks fantastic. I shouldn't tell you that. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> Now here's the board. Now before we start, I would like to, to talk about really just some of the nice component quality of this game. You might think, Vassal, what have you done to your game in that coffee stain? But that's actually on the board. The sticky notes up here in the corner, the stain over here, that's on the board. And then these really nice holders here. Each of them comes with a lid that makes it very clear what goes inside. This is the Blue Business School. So this container, these containers fit very nicely in the box. The containers come with uh, little cubes and with um, little silhouettes of people. So you have, for example, you have your nerds and you have your suits. Suits bring money, nerds bring growth. And then there, so those cubes are regular nerds and then the blues would be big nerds. Greens would be regular suits and big suits. Actually, I believe I have those colors mixed. It's the green who is nerds and the blues who are suits. All right, so. Each player at the beginning of the game is going to get four different products. A communications product, a media product, an e-commerce product, and a social networking product. And depending on how many players are in the game, you're going to pick some of those products and you're going to put them on different spots on the board. Probably near you. So you'll put, for example, I'll be I, H, and G. And then uh, another player might be F, E, and D. And then uh, the next player will be C, B, A. And then the last player here will be L, K, and J. Now, with more players, you'll have fewer products. With fewer players, you'll have more products. And basically, you won't put out all your products. So you have to pick which ones. It's not really a big deal when you're picking them. There's no inherent advantages to using a certain product. It's just, it's just that your product of a specific type will be competing against other products of that same type from other players. Each product has two letter tokens that correspond with it. One here on this middle section, this shows you the turn order. We start with one and go around to 12 for turn order for each company. And then each product up here has a token that shows how many users that token has and how many points it will be worth at the end of the game. Now, on a player's turn, so player's turns are not actually in player turns, but for example, number one here is A. So whoever controls A goes first, then whoever controls J goes with that company, then H, then F, etc. So sometimes you might get two or th maybe even three turns in a row. But when it's your turn, the first thing you're going to do, so let's say it's A's turn, is you're going to roll a die. That's all you're going to do. And you're going to move your token, A, for example, three spaces. So A goes one, two, three. And at that point, you're going to look at the numbers on A here. The first one is income. The big number there is income. The little number is points. So the big number is what's really important, income. And we have income over here, which are these yellow cubes, and that's what's used for money in this game. So after you roll for that, uh, then you're going to see how much, uh, what you're going to do with the money that you have. You can buy new people for your company. So let's take a look at A. Well, let's not take a look at A because it's upside down. Let's take a closer look here at G. Let's say it was G's turn. If I want to buy some people, let's say for example, now, I can only buy two people each turn, so I say, oh, you know what, I'm going to buy two nerds for G. So I'm going to put them down here on level four. I could buy a big nerd or a big suit. Here's a big suit, for example. But that was, that's going to cost me 
much more. They cost me six. The other guys cost me one each. So this cost me two to put two down. This guy cost me six, which is much more expensive. Now, what's the point of putting these people? Well, they both have different uses. The nerds, when you roll the die at the beginning of the round to see how far you move, each nerd you have on that company will let you move one more because your product is more innovative. The suits, you get when you take the money that that company is going to give you, each suit gives you one more money. So the suits help provide more money. The big suit and big nerd counts as a suit or nerd giving you more money or more roll, but they will give it to you for all your companies. So this blue, uh, this blue suit here is going to give it to you for IHNG. So in all three of those companies, so you can see how useful they are. Now, at the end of your turn, after you get your money for that company, and after everybody has gone and done this sort of thing, then each person is going to move up all their people. And so you always add people to the fourth row. Once they get up here to the zero row, then they'll stay up there permanently. Now, why do they move here? Well, that's because when you buy workers, eventually the, the pool of workers, even though there does seem to be a lot of them, the pool of workers is going to run out. And there's a deliberate one less of each of these big nerds and big, and big uh, suits in the game than there is number of players. But you're going to run out of these, but you can poach them from other players. When you do so, you pay the cost plus the number of where they are. So when they first get hired, it's going to be hard to, to steal them from that company. But the longer they're there, I guess the more dissatisfied they get so that you can buy them from that company. Now, I also should mention that the game has some kind of built-in backwards thing. So uh, if you're, you get past 100 users using your product, at that point, after each turn goes by, you're going to roll a die, uh, roll a die and then you're going to, some of your products are going to go backwards. They can only go two spaces backwards, but if I roll six, I would have to move all three of my products two spaces backwards. So there's always people who, are, who stop using your technology. Once you get past the launch spot here on the board, and there's also some cards, but then you will have to show what kind of product you have. Because once your product is out there, and once it's been launched, at the end of the year, after the end of a whole turn, we'll have a showdown between launch products. And basically, we're going to count how many nerds and big nerds are there. And you can even spend money, marketing money, on a product to help you win that. And whoever wins that is going to move even farther forward. And this is going to happen until somebody gets all the way to the end here. Uh, because you're, you're trying to move your products forward. And... Once the last product has been launched or revealed, so when all these products are turned over, the game is over, and whoever is the far, you're going to look at all the victory points of where your products are, and whoever has the highest victory point is the winner. Now, there's one big thing I did not mention in this game, and that's these cards. There's a whole pile of cards in the game. And so, for example, the defense says if you have at least one suit, play after a card has played against you, that card is neutralized. Here, hire or poach a second big suit. Uh, here, during your product turn, roll the die twice for additional user adoption. You can move suits Johnny and Lance back to the forefield. Now, that doesn't really mean anything. It just means that Johnny and Lance are just two of your suits. The names don't mean anything, so you have them here on your zero. They're easy for people to poach, but you get to move them back to the four. So these cards can really hurt other people. You can make them lose their turns and stuff, or they can really help you out. And you're going to have a handful of these cards that you actually can refill every turn, so there's no reason not to use as many of them as you possibly can each turn. And that is basically the game. As you can see, stellar production values. There are some very neat concepts in this game. The, the nerds and the suits, the big nerds and the big suits, buying them, poaching them from other players, uh, the idea of getting people competing against, you know, the, the more of a certain kind of thing out there, the more mobile apps there are out there, the more you're going to compete with one another. Some very interesting aspects. But, <laughs> when it comes down to it, this is essentially a roll and move game. Man, I hate saying that because... I don't mind the roll and move aspect, but that is all you're doing in this game is, well, well, hang on, no, there's another problem, but you roll the die, and if I roll several sixes and you roll ones, I'm going to kick you all down in town. It's just going to happen. It, it just, 
I don't know what it is. Maybe they could have modified the die, used a 1D4 or something to, to make the die rolls not so, or 2D6. I, I don't know. I, I can't think of a better way to do it. I don't mind the idea of rolling a die and moving forward, but it just, the, the swings of luck there are fairly wild. The rest of the game is fine, except, and this is even more of a problem than a roll and move thing, those cards. Now look, don't get me wrong, I love cards. Uh, I think cards are great, especially when you play cards that mess over your opponents and do things. Fantastic and fun. But in this game, you can really mess somebody over to the point where they cannot win the game because you just shot a whole turn. And these cards are just crazy random. It's like, bum, 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 bum. And you can say, well, that's what life's like for a startup company. And again, if I want to be the way that life is, I wouldn't be playing a board game. I want to have fun when I'm doing these. And yes, it's fun to be the person playing these cards, but when you're the person who's just getting battered by the other players, and why not play them? And some cards are much better than others. The card that lets me roll the dice twice is massively better. And some cards aren't any use at all at the beginning of the game, so if you draw them, you're kind of sitting there going, well, this is not fair. I drew worthless cards right now. They're good at the end of the game, but right now I want more useful cards. Altogether, the game worked, and several of the players I played it with did enjoy it. But overall, it kind of soured, especially for me, as I sat there and said, man, it, the idea is neat, startup company is competing, I don't even mind the rolling of the die, but it, the, the swings were, there were so random, not to mention the cards, and you could... This game also has the minor problem, and I say minor because I don't, I don't mind this as much, where people can gang up on one person if they want to. Man, I really wanted to like it. Like I said, top-notch production values, but I can't recommend this one because I think that people will either get frustrated by the rolling and moving or they'll get really frustrated by the completely random powerful card draws that just spread chaos in a game which I don't think was intended to have as much chaos in it as you might think. Oh well. It's a good try though, and I'm and I and the next game by the same designer, I will check out because I think that they're at the cusp of great things. This game had some, just, it's like right there. I think it needed some more development before it, it, it came out, but as it is, it seems like it's just, the, it's, it's, it's maybe 66% there, two thirds of the way where it should be, and a couple things could have been modified to make it a more balanced, enjoyable game. So, ah, a sad thing, but just not one I'm gonna recommend at this point. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game.